All right, hey guys, hey, 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 we are back with more information on the Diddy um, arrest as well as him being denied bond. I wanted to come in and kind of show you guys the prison that he is currently in. Uh, so let me just share my screen. I will say, of course, I am not sitting up here as one of those people that's like, yeah, he deserves it. Um, I will say that nobody, I'm definitely not gloating or jumping up and down about his current situation, but I do want to, um, you know, just share with you what is going on. So this is MDC Brooklyn. This is the prison that he is, or detention center, that he is uh, currently going to be held in until trial starts. From one of the content creators I heard, they said that it could be years before his trial starts. Um, the current population is about 1,200 inmates. Um, there have been a lot of issues at this prison. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, discuss those right now. First, I want to share with you what his attorney had to say about the um, prison that he is currently, or detention center prison, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, that he is going to be in at this current time. So let me share that with y'all. my sound is on. So uh, we made a bail appeal uh, to Judge Carter. Uh, it did not go our way. Um, the fight continues. Uh, we're not we're, we're not we're not giving up by a long shot. I told Mr. Combs um, I'm going to try and get his case to trial as quickly as possible. I'm going to try and minimize the amount of time he spends in very very difficult and I believe inhumane. Uh, housing conditions in the in the special housing unit in the Metropolitan Detention Facility. And I'm going to do everything that I can uh, to move this case as quickly as possible. I understand that the government has a great amount of electronic devices that they have to download and provide to me, but everything's on the government's timetable. Nothing's on the defendant's timetable. And they're going to have to accommodate me and him and give us a, a quick trial, uh, and I'm going to be pushing for that. Um, he's he's ready. He's focused. Uh, he has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Nothing has changed from his perspective. I obviously would much prefer to fight this case with him out of jail, and we are going to try to bring that about um, through additional legal process. Um, but wherever he is, his resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight anymore. Um, I'm not really going to take any questions. Um, but at this point, we are we are moving forward. Uh, we're preparing for trial as we speak. And we are considering our next steps and, and appealing uh, the court's ruling to today. All right. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Baby, and that attorney gonna do his job, okay? He is attorney, okay? Um, somebody said, I don't know that video of him was talking Cassie in that hotel look at inhumane. And baby, I don't care what she took or what she did, the way he drugged her, it was definitely, definitely, definitely uh inappropriate. That was horrible. So, you know, the attorney, of course, is gonna do his job and um say, look you know, it, it's inhumane, uh, you know, this prison or detention center was um, actually closed, I want to say for um, two years, um, because it was in such bad condition. So I'm going to take you to the article from NPR in regards to the prison that did it or detention center prison that Diddy is currently being housed at. Now he is in the SHU, which I think is like special house, a special housing unit. Um, and it usually is for people who haven't been processed in yet or uh, those I think with conduct issues. Um, they halted intake of sentence inmates. The policy shift, this was in September, September 16, 2024. 
Uh, the policy shift comes after a judge in August ruled he would vacate an elderly man's sentence if he was sent to MDC Brooklyn, citing the jail's barbaric conditions. So the troubled MDC Brooklyn jail will no longer take inmate serving sentences, a major policy shift after a judge threatened to vacate one man's sentence if he was sent to the notorious lockup. As of August, federal defendants who are entering the prison system after their sentence will no longer face the prospect of serving out their terms at the Sunset Park Jail, the Bureau of Prisons has confirmed. Though the jail formerly known <clears throat> as Metropolitan D Detention Center mainly houses suspects awaiting prosecution, a small percentage of its 1,200 inmates are not there pre-trial and white-collar defendants with sentences shorter than a year can wind up serving their time there. In fact, since August, the Federal Bureau of Prisons has tempor temporarily paused all initial designations to the minimum security cadre component of MDC Brooklyn. There are currently 42 individuals serving their sentences at MDC Brooklyn. The Brooklyn jail has been plagued for years by gross understaffing, medical mistreatment, atrocious conditions, and violence. Federal judges routinely reduce prison sentences, credits prison sentences for defendants who have had to endure horrific conditions there while being held pre-trial. Allegations of inhumane treatment at MDC continue, and judges in this district are subject to a steady drum fire of such charges, uh, often uncontested by prosecutors Brown wrote in his sentencing decision. The judge detailed a string of violence at MDC, including two murders, and a caught on video assault that showed a trio of MS-13 attackers stabbing a fellow gang member for 37 seconds before a lone correction officer arrived to stop them. Taken together, these incidents demonstrate a woeful lack of supervision over the facility, a breakdown of order, and an environment of lawlessness within its confines that constitute unacceptable, reprehensible, and deadly mismanagement, Brown said. The Bureau of Prisons shifts in, shift in policy surfaced publicly during the sentencing last week of a former ticket master executive convicted of um, hacking a rival tickets company server in Brooklyn Federal Court, who spent 107 days in Italian jail and one night at NBC before his release on bail in June received time served, but prosecutors were asking for prison time. In his pitch to the sentencing judge, Assistant U.S. Attorney Doug Pravda tried to get ahead of any concerns that me, who has several health problems, might get sent to NBC if the judge agreed to a short sentence. Study reveals states with the most understaffed prisons a study revealed the states with the most understaffed prisons after analyzing ratios of correct. The government has been advised that the Bureau of Prisons designation and Sentence Computation Center has been instructed not to designate to MDC Brooklyn, Pravda wrote on September 3rd. Um, and this is about a different case, so we don't want to go into that. Now, I know that um, Wikipedia can be a bad um source because people can actually go in there and edit it but there were a few things in there that i wanted to to um bring to light so let me just pull it up right quick now this is where a lot of notable celebrities have went um so it holds male and female prisoners of all security levels. It is operated by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Um, as of April 2022, there were 1,700 prisoners at the hill there. Uh, we just read that there's only 1,200 there now. It is one of the most troubled, if not the most troubled facility in the Bureau of Prisons. That is crazy. Um, And this is what we just read. Uh, there was an inmate assault there in 2009. Um, and these are just some of, of the notable cases as to why they say that it's one of the worst, if not the worst, prison to be in. Uh, 
the inmates Juan Orlando Hernandez Alvarado. Uh, he was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Um, Gennaro Garcia Luna, he's awaiting sentencing. Um, Six Nine was there on confinement. Allison Mack, R. Kelly was there um, and was transferred. Betty Wap was there and then transferred. This is Ja Rule. He was he served time there, twenty eight months there. Al Sharpton was there. What? Al. Michael Cohen was there. This lady, you know, with Epstein, she was there. Um, Lord, then they got your boy. Okay, they got your boy on there. Oh, uh, let me see. Did I even transfer? I did. Okay, good. Because I'm up here talking to all these people. Um, so, yeah. Um, that is crazy. That he's going to, it's almost like it's going to be Hunger Games up in that mode, ain't it? <laughs> like, it sounds like it's Hunger Games up in there. So, um, yeah, that's that's where Diddy's gonna be, and that's a huge fall from the forty-eight million dollar mansion and the house assistants and the team and the Javanchi and you know Sally, his family, and you're in the shoe, and you know um, I think someone else said you know his safety could be in danger while he's there. And, I mean. I will say that I think a lot of the artists today could potentially take some notes from this situation because, I mean, of course, we see a lot of entertainers doing a lot of different things today. And I mean, I can't say it's worse or, or not because, I mean, during our era, you know, when, you know, we had our uh, Miami was definitely doing its thing and we, Louisiana cash money, like, that's how we had it. Like, we had, like, different areas all were putting out music and different music. So, you know, of course, the videos and what they the girls was doing, and then you had the ethnics and all of that. So, I can't say that this generation is worse than the generation I ra I was raised in. I guess I just aged myself a little bit, but I will say that I hope that this is a cautionary tale for a lot of celebrities who are potentially like in this kind of situation because you know Diddy had everybody sign NDAs, etc. But I mean, you see that there's loopholes even in that NDA and just even in, okay, this person was a willing participant. I mean, how far were they willing? You know what I'm saying? Was it just to come to the room? Was it just to come to the house? Was it just to go in the bedroom? Okay, then when they saw somebody else come in, was it like, wait, hold on? Or did they do it because they were already in that situation and they didn't want to potentially get any kickback or any kind of, you know, um, um, you know, any kind of behavior that they felt was threatening. I mean, when we look at making the band and all these other shows, when we look at that, I mean, for real, for real, Diddy was carrying them a lot. I mean, I just remember, and I don't even have to watch the episodes again to just remember how, you know, he treated uh, the first group of making the band and, you know, how he kept on giving Sarah Stokes such a hard time. And Robert, he rolled him. And I mean, Robert had one of the best voices in the group. Uh, I'm sorry, not Robert, but he he rolled Sarah Stokes and Ellie and this was just fire with his rap. And I mean, he was just fire. And then when I look at, you know, Danity Kane and just the way that, you know, they always seem to have their jobs on the line and the way they were talked to and the way they were addressed. And, you know, these women were in a male dominated industry and then they were around all males mostly and then even the women. Um, from, you know, just what I've understood as from Aubrey O'Day and Don Richard, it's like the women were kind of, they went along with it. So, you know, there's now conversation about the chief of staff that Diddy has and what was her role and how much does she know and how much does she participate, which is along the same lines as E 
um, and the, the woman who was just recently charged with 24 years for her participation with him. And so, you know, when I think too about day 26 and how he rolled Robert and how he would talk to them and be like, you, you ain't that tough and you ain't that, you don't seem that great. I mean, like it was always like he was sunning them for real, like for real, for real, you know, especially with day 26 when you got men from all around the world, you know, around the country, excuse me. And you got this man standing up here talking to y'all like y'all ain't nothing. And it's on camera. You got to take that. You got to eat that. Um, I just to think that, uh, you know, that this man wasn't using his power and position when we saw, in my opinion, him using his power and position on television, on our screens week after week. Um, I think it's a little hard to believe that there wasn't, in my opinion, some kind of um, influence, uh, negative or aggressive influence used to get people to do what they wanted him to do. Now, that was one other thing that I forgot to show you all. And it is Boosie. And I said, not Boosie. I said, not Boosie. Boosie. Boosie, why you need to stay quiet? Boosie, why you need to be... What, Boosie. This ain't the one, friend. This ain't the one. So I'm just going to share with y'all as we end what Boosie said. Because I did share with y'all what DJ Envy's uh, positioning was on it. Let me go here. So Boosie says, I feel Diddy in jail for basically doing what every other famous entertainer has done. Flew chicks out for threesomes. He's just effier. We can actually go call women peas who fly in willingly to be with their partners for ex. If that's the case, if you've been flewed out and had ex, you should be labeled a, pop, a pea. If that's the case, that's 80% of the women reading this. What? I didn't see that. Um, in trafficking, H. Now you're a celebrity. You got to fly P in. How else you got get the P? You're never in one place. When I saw that video, I was pissed off at this end. Like, he really got a problem. But facing life in prison for doing baseball, some uh, so many other entertainers has done, I disagree. And it's crazy. It's crazy. And I think there was use of drugs. And I think that if an ex worker was called out to do something or a female was flewed out, but then when you have another man come in the room to join in, when there are acts that maybe someone wasn't used to, that they had to then unwillingly participate in, um, it is what it is. Now, the other, it, it's not it is what it is. I'm sorry, because I'm just thinking how silly this statement was. It's like, bro, it, it come on now. Come on now. Come on now, boost. You know you done heard the stories. And the other thing, too, is that they're saying that he was flying, transporting women to other places. Okay. And then we can't forget what his girlfriend, PR friend, Carisha said about the baby mama. So that means that she saw some of that. Now, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but... I will say that I'm um, boosted, not this time. So she just lets television says, sometimes you just need to be quiet. Whatever happened is to shut your, shutting your whole mouth up. <laughs> just left New York hooked up with P. Diddy. We get it, Boosie. This probably most ignorant I read today. <laughs> and then she says, I totally agree with the Boosie. You might as well lock everybody up because all these men are guilty of the same thing. Rappers, football players, boxers. Any person that has notoriety is guilty of these same things. I just don't think I just don't think it's the same, y'all. I don't think it's the same. I just don't think it's the same. And 
they did say that some of the young ladies were underage or barely legal. So, oh, Ooh, that's an interesting contrast there too. All right, so you guys let me know first. What do you think of the prison in D.C. that he's going to, to be detained in? How long do you think possibly he'll be there before his trial starts? Um, do you agree with Boosie on, look, all these people do it in some of the comments. All these folks doing it. So why he got to take a hit like that when it's a part of the culture? And then we go to, as I end this, Kendrick Lamar saying, the party's dying. The party has to die. I mean, because maybe it's a time for that culture to be evaluated, looked at, and then stopped. I want to hear what you guys think. All right. Until next time, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that like button for me so that uh, I'll know that you're here. Comment too, because I want to know. I want to get into conversation. Um, just make sure that we're respectful <clears throat> in the comments. But I want to know what you guys think. I'm going to definitely stay on top of this. All right, guys. God bless. Make sure that you're making the wise decisions <laughs> out here in these streets. And I will see you on the next one.